it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverablebase.com. I am joined today by one of our tutors, the great Olivier Babaz. If you don't know Olivier, please go and check out some links that I'll provide under this video to his website, and we'll have some examples of his playing as well on this page, wherever you're viewing it as well, because he's a wonderful bass player, uh, and hopefully we can share your music with uh, some new people. Uh, Olivier, today I'm hoping to ask you about your practice routine. This is a question that I love to ask pretty much everybody that comes in to teach a discoverable bass, because I'm so fascinated myself to how people reach the level that you have with on the instrument. So what does your daily practice routine look like? Oh, thank you for asking that. Uh, uh, I have to admit it has changed uh, over the years quite a lot, but um, the basis is that uh, I work every day uh, separated from uh, the project I'm working on. So separated from the shows, separated from the concerts, separated from the recording, the new music I have to learn. I have two hours daily of uh, practice, uh, totally. Uh, nothing to do with my concert coming and everything. I have two big chunks. So one hour is uh, with the bass and the other hour is without the bass. So without the bass, I practice uh, mainly uh, intonation exercise, right hand technique, uh, mainly, mainly bowing. And I basically, uh, I have periods of time where I practice very focused thing and to identify these, these things, I just uh, improvise until the point where I'm not satisfied with how it sounds and that I try to narrow it down to the key thing that makes it not work. And then from there, I'm building exercise to kind of uh, 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 correct that problem or expand that good thing that I found. So the obstacle is the way yes. you're looking for that fault and yeah, then you're absolutely. isolating it. Yes, absolutely. And I even uh, uh, exaggerate it on purpose in order to really uh, narrow it down. For uh, I could give you, I don't know, example, if I'm uh, having a trouble uh, shifting from one position to the other in the middle of a solo at one night, I will remember that, oh, this kind of move, I'm not really comfortable. And that the morning afterwards, I will try to find it. Okay, what's going wrong and what does it, what do, it doesn't feel right. And then when I narrow it down, okay, my shift from that hand, from that finger to that kind of position is really not smooth. So, okay, let's try to focus on that. And instead of playing phrases with that move, I'm just building exercises around only that move repetitively and in dif different position with different combination of finger and nose. So that's kind of how I build exercise. So basically I got one hour of technique, which is mainly, as I told you, uh, right hand technique, intonation, so mainly bowing. And the other hour of technique, I, I, in the other hour of uh, work I have is a uh, practice is uh, without the bass. So it's mainly piano, uh, so playing, uh, learning melodies on the piano and singing and rhythm, a lot of rhythmic stuff. And do, and do you feel that working away from the instrument really benefits you when you come back or is it to develop other aspects of your, your musicianship such as composition or um, is it all informed? <coughs> yeah, it's, it's all synergical within mm. each other, but it's also as a, because the bass has a obvious limitations when it comes to composing and to arranging. So it's a great skill to have a keyboard skill or a guitar skills or even singing skills, just, just to have conscious of what you could do and may not be doing on the bass because whether you are, you don't have the skill to do it on the bass or because it's just totally impossible. So, and it's just uh, opening your ears and your mind. And uh, I'm playing, another thing I do a lot is playing along to records to learn uh, I used to do that a lot to learn standard, but I, I, do, I do that a lot to get used to people I, I love, uh, musicians I love, and to get more into their own field. So whether uh, being, for example, drummers, I play a lot along with the uh, jazz records to, I don't know if I, I really want to understand more deeply uh, the sound of uh, Roy Haynes and, it, and his feel. I will put a few records with him and spend a week with him, uh, really trying to play with him. Or it can be somebody I want to emulate. Uh, it can be a guitar player or a, an Indian musician, and I will spend a lot of time uh, uh, really emulating his sound. And the uh, last thing about practicing, uh, especially for uh, improvisation, is uh, we talked a little bit about that in the course, but it's uh, recording yourself, and even more important than recording yourself, listening back to yourself. 
it's really, really very important and it's a great, great investment of time and energy to record yourself and force yourself to listen to everything. Because when you record yourself and you know you are going to listen, uh, you're really playing that differently than when you record yourself and you're saying, oh, maybe if it's good, I will, I will listen it back. So just recording and, and investing the same time listening back than the time uh, playing. I, th I think that's great advice. I found when I started filming video lessons, I um, would suddenly have to listen to myself play a lot more because I'd be doing all the editing and bringing, all, you know, bringing everything in. So I'd be listening to myself play for really long periods of time. And it was quite uh, upsetting to hear the mistakes so yes, clearly. And, the, and you think that you know them. And at the time, you know, I've been playing for a long time. And, sure. and I thought I knew uh, some of the problems and it was funny because I just literally watched a, one of the very first videos I ever did the other day uh, and I can hear myself playing something out of time and I don't remember noticing that when I did it yeah. and it's so obvious to me now I'm thinking how do I not see that but the answer is to is to give yourself the space away from the instrument to analyze what you're doing isn't it and it's amazing probably yes amazing the um, the benefits of that so I completely agree so thanks so much uh, Olivier it's been Really uh, interesting talking to you. Thanks for coming and filming this fantastic course. If you want to learn more from Olivier, go and check out the Creative Improviser at Discover Double Bass because it's a really in-depth course that gets into some pretty heavy uh, <laughs> topics that will help you develop your own voice as an improviser. So thanks for watching at home and thanks for joining me today, Olivier. Thanks.